Hi, I'm Caitlin, and welcome to video 5 of the Quick Start series for the Analog Discovery 2. In this video, we'll go over the Waveform Generator tool. Waveform generators are used to supply a known signal into a circuit under test in order to view, record, or analyze its response. An arbitrary waveform generator supplies whatever signal the user defines, while a function generator supplies known signals, such as a square or sine wave. The Analog Discovery 2's waveform generator is a combination of both of these tools. The waveform generators can be accessed by the yellow wires on the Flywire connector. You can open the waveform generator by clicking WaveGen in the navigation bar in Waveforms 2015. On the menu bar, you'll find File, Control, Edit, and Window. File lets you open a new waveform generator, open a save configuration, save your current configuration as a new project, or export the waveform generator data. It can be exported as an image, CSV, text, or TDMS file. Control allows you to run all and stop all, which will either start or stop all WaveGen channels. Edit allows you to copy and swap channels. Window allows you to switch between different windows and waveforms. You can open the tool in a new window by clicking this button. Below the menu bar are three buttons. The first is Run All, which controls the function generation on all channels that have been turned on. The next is Channels, which allows you to open or close Channel 1 and Channel 2. And the last is a drop-down that gives you synchronization options between the channels and allows you to edit different trigger options. This is useful if you need to run multiple signals through the same circuit or trigger one or both signals at a specific time. In no synchronization mode, no synchronization or trigger patterns are available. In independent mode, the channels are working independently. The trigger, wait, run, and repeat settings can be independently configured for each channel and opened in each channel's pane. In synchronized mode, the trigger, wait, run, and repeat settings are all the same for all selected channels within the same instrument instance. The auto-synchronization mode is similar to the synchronized mode, where runtime is automatically adjusted to the longest period from all channel settings. When you use independent or synchronized mode, waveforms will allow trigger settings. The drop-down box next to the trigger lets you determine what type of trigger source you want. You can select none, an external signal, or some of the other tools and waveforms. You can also trigger manually by setting the trigger to manual and clicking the manual trigger button. The drop-down to the right of wait lets you set wait time. This will output the offset value for the desired wait time before starting the selected waveform. The drop-down to the right of repeat lets you set how many times you want to set the signal to repeat before returning the output to the idle state. You can also select repeat trigger, which will require you to trigger the wavegen output for the number of cycles you entered in the repeat box. Let's go through an example of how you can use the trigger settings. Set the trigger to manual, set wait to 500 microseconds, run to 2 milliseconds, and repeat to 2. This will produce a 1 kHz signal at 1 volt amplitude. Once manually triggered, this will output for 500 microseconds and then output a sine wave for 2 milliseconds and repeat 2 times. We can verify this result using the oscilloscope. The next important section of the waveform generator is the configuration options. There are six different configurations you can choose from depending on the waveform you want to create. The run button will always turn on or off that channel. The gear allows you to change what the output is in an idle state, either the initial value or the offset. The drop-down box between those two allows you to choose which configuration you want. Simple, basic, custom, play, sweep, and modulation. Let's look at the first configuration option, simple. From here you can set the type of signal you want from the type drop-down. You can select DC, sine, square, triangle, ramp up, ramp down, noise, trapezium, or sine power. Once you choose a waveform type, you have several editable parameters. Those parameters are frequency, amplitude, offset, symmetry, and phase. With certain waveform types, some of these options will be grayed out, as they don't apply. Frequency allows you to determine the frequency of your output signal in hertz, from 100 microhertz to 10 megahertz. Amplitude tells you how far your signal will travel above and below the offset. You can enter between positive and negative 5 volts. Offset allows you to change where the center value is relative to zero. You can enter anything between positive and negative 5 volts. Symmetry changes depending on the signal. For a square wave, it's duty cycle. For a sine power wave, it's power. Phase allows you to shift the signal in any value between zero and 360 degrees. The configuration option basic gives you the same parameter options as simple, except you have more control. You have sliders that can be adjusted in real time, and you can also minimize the sliders. The next configuration option is custom. Select Custom from the drop-down and hit New. Name lets you assign a name to the waveform, 
Normalize normalizes the plot value between negative 100% and 100% range and 0% and 100% domain. You can also export a waveform as an image, CSV, text, or TDMS file. You can add or remove labels and change the width of the plot trace by clicking the gear icon. On the right hand side, you have the sample box. There are 4,096 samples that each correspond to a data point on the plot. You can use this box to manually adjust the data points to create custom waveforms. On the left, there are multiple tabs that allow you to define the waveform, function, math, values, file, and alter. The function tab has eight eligible parameters. Start and length refer to the x-axis, where it starts and how long it will be. Type gives the type of the waveform. Cycle determines how many times the waveform will repeat. Amplitude sets the percentage of the available window the signal will use for amplitude. Offset determines the vertical center. And symmetry and phase have the same effect as before. Let's do an example. I'll set the length to 25%, amplitude to 50%, symmetry to 75%, and uncheck normalize. Click generate and it will add it to the waveform in the center. Now I want to add a triangle wave after the sine wave. Put 25 for start, 50 for length, select triangle type, put 50 for symmetry, 180 for phase. Select generate and add it to the plot. Now I want to add a sine wave partway through the triangle wave. Set start to 66, length to 3, sine type, amplitude to 75, and offset to negative 25. Click OK to save the waveform and it'll appear in the main window. On the far left, you can select any of your custom signals. Next to that, you can update the custom signal settings. You can set the frequency, sample rate, amplitude, offset, and phase. The next custom tab is the math tab. Using JavaScript, type in whatever math function you want. The samples box defines how many data points will be in the plot. The x from and to boxes define the range of x values used in the script. Checking insert opens the predefined JavaScript math functions. The next custom tab is values. This allows you to add up to 100 values on the left. This is especially useful for step functions. The next custom tab is file. You can import a saved waveform file. The start and length dropdowns allow you to determine how much of the file is imported. The last custom tab is alter. From here, you can take any function you've already designed and alter it. When you click alter, a second window will open. You can generate another signal and then click OK to import it into the alter window. Let's do an example. Start in the math tab and generate a sine waveform using sine 2 pi x. Then from the alter tab, make sure the plus add is selected and click alter with. In the new window, click the math tab and enter sine 6 pi x divided by 3. Then click generate. Click OK in the bottom and you'll see the altered signal. Click alter with again and repeat with sine 10 pi x divided by 5 and sine 14 pi x divided by 7. Repeat to the 20th iteration and we get almost a square wave. Click OK and the new waveform will populate in the main gen win wave gen window. The last custom option is to simply draw on the plot. In any tab, you can click on the plot and start drawing. Now that we're done with a custom example, let's go back to the main configuration options. We've done simple, basic, and custom, and we have play, sweep, and modulation left. Play allows you to import and playback a CSV, text, MP3, WAV, WMV, or AVI file. The maximum number of samples that the buffer can hold is 10 million. The time that you can play back will vary by the frequency of the playback. For example, at 44.1 kHz playback frequency, an MP3 file lasted for about three minutes. Click Import to select a file to import from your computer. This will open a new window. On the left are some options that can be edited. First, lets you determine what sample will play first. Count is the number of samples in the file. Offset lets you move the vertical center of the file and amplitude will allow you to increase the volume. Sample rate is the weight at which file samples will be played back. Time span shows how long your file will play given the samples and the sample rate. The waveform will be displayed on the plot on the right. Click OK to finalize the import. Once back in the main window, the playback control options will be available. You can adjust the playback frequency offset or amplitude. Clicking Run will turn on the wave gen, which will output through the wires on the flywire and through the audio jack. To remove a file, click the red minus sign, or you can select Clear to remove all files. The next configuration option to explore is Sweep. Sweep can be used to play a range of frequencies and amplitudes over a given period of time. On the left-hand side of the controls, they are the same as the simple option with the addition of Sweep 2 and Damp 2. Sweep 2 gives you an upper limit for the sweep range. The lower limit is the setting in the frequency box. 
The time box lets you decide how long the sweep will take. Damp2 sets a maximum amplitude. The lower limit of the amplitude is the value put in the amplitude box. Clicking Run will continuously play back the output. The next configuration pane is Modulation. Modulation allows you to modify the amplitude or frequency of a higher frequency carrier signal according to a lower frequency signal. On the left are the signal controls and on the right is the plot of the carrier, AM and FM modulation signals and the final output signal. The first set of controls is for the carrier wave and they are the same as the simple options. Next are separate controls for frequency modulation and amplitude modulation. The first control is frequency. By default, the carrier is a full order of magnitude higher than either the FM or AM frequencies. This difference should be maintained. Below that is amplitude slash index. Amplitude applies only to the carrier and index to the AM and FM signals. Index tells you how much the modulation signals affect your output signal relative to the carrier. Offset moves the signal vertically. Symmetry changes the symmetry of the signals. Phase shifts the signal horizontally along the time axis as described before. Once you have it all set, click Run. Lastly, we'll go through some of the features in the main window. There is of course the preview plot that lets you preview the signal. There is also a gear that allows you to change the look of the plot. You can add labels, change the color of the plot, change how wide the plot trace is, scale the plot window, and change the scale of a signal if it is modulated. Now you know some of the basic functionality of the waveform generator tool. In our next video, we'll go over the use of the voltmeter in waveforms. Subscribe to stay up to date to Digilance products and services. Thanks for watching.